Hello, everybody, and uh, happy Rosh Hashanah. Before heading into work this afternoon, I'm going to do a little, or this morning, I should say, I'm going to do some music editing on the uh, CD that I'm working out. Hopefully, the sound won't be too crazy for you on the other end. Uh, let me see. Yeah, it looks like it's, it's pretty hot. So maybe I can go into the controls. Let's see here. Lower my audio level just a tidbit. And let's see how that goes. Let's see. I think it's still pretty hot. All right, so uh, what I'm trying to do right now, there are gaps in between. The main vocal is here. And uh, yeah, it's kind of easy to see when I got it labeled main vocal right there. Uh, I'm kind of messy when it comes to, to doing these things. So I'm cleaning it up a little bit. Now, when you're editing a vocal line, let's see this one, you could see that this one, I don't know how to uh, focus in maybe there's no way to do that if i'm not using many cam but anyway this particular area this is a little sound bit so if i go right here there's a little fade out i could make that a little bit shorter the purpose of this is it takes away any crackles in between uh you know because what could happen when you're doing a vocal and you're uh near a mic and you're listening to it through headphones occasionally you could hit the mic stand you could you know hit a variety of different things and uh or there's little pops and clicks you hit the cable so this just makes sure those those elements are out oh my god that one has I didn't really hear a breath or notice anything, but it's really just to kind of clean it up. Now there you can hear a little artifact there. It's tough, but I, I, I don't think there's any way that I really can prevent it other than retracking the vocal. And, and it's probably something that you wouldn't notice, but you could hear a little bit of a click in between there and the word God. And that's because I overdubbed here. Uh, it might've been better just to retrack it it can, this song, I think, I mean, I like this song enough. Listen to it closely. Oh, my God. And then in the middle of God, you'll hear it. Oh my God, Just a little bit. Actually, it's kind of annoying. So what I'll try and do is see if I can. I don't know how much I recorded that. Let's see. I obviously didn't like this, and I don't know why. Let's find out. That's not bad. I don't know why. So maybe I could just take Oh My God there, and I might be a lot cleaner. Let's see. Oh my God, please keep that was great. I think the artifact's gone, if, if you noticed it. Oh my God, please keep something. I, don't, I don't know why I did that in the first place um i'm gonna leave that now you see the gap here so i'm going to use a little razor do a little cut in there and then we're going to close that off so what this does is it, it, it acts as a fade so this line this whole line here i can move this up and down this arrow to lower the volume of the track i want it to be consistent with this one so um fade that out a little bit then we can fold this in to take out any potential artifacts and crackles and pops let's see how that goes i sort of felt like yeah this doesn't have this is the background vocal so i need to do that too there seemed to be a little bit of artifact in the background vocal Let's see how that goes. That works. Let's close that. 
off. Let's do it with the background mobile too. This line that I'm sort of getting close to, this is just where the, um, you probably have already figured that out where the song is currently. So let's close that up. We're gonna bring this in a little bit. And bring this in a little bit. I hope that the sound isn't too bad here. I know my, my voice right now should be kind of soft. Hopefully it appears to be. As soon as I put the music in, it gets a little crazy. So that, that sounds pretty clean. All right, so now we'll take this part. You see, it's kind of just time consuming, but there's, there's something fun. It's almost like crochet. You know, my wife likes to crochet and uh, I don't get it. But then, you know, I do something like this and she sits and watches me meticulously do this silly little stuff, which is almost like sound surgery. And she just says the same thing. You know, what's the point? It sounds okay. It does, but there's little elements and particularly I'm preparing this for mastering. And what mastering is, is it sweetens up everything. There, there are people out there in every recording that you've ever bought, at least in the modern, in, in, in the last four years, I would figure. I'm no expert in the history of mastering. But mastering is, is just a group of folks who sit in a sound studio with good studio speakers and they try and hit all the sweet spots of the sound so that it's the stuff that you hear on the radio is just all, it just, there's a, there's a certain, whether they add a little reverb or they add, um, who knows what they add? I don't know. I don't master. I mean, in a way I master with some of this stuff, but I don't have an ear to do it. I don't have any training to do it. So you send it to the professionals. And that's one of the things that I'm doing here. And, and the group that I use is affiliated with Universal, Universal Studios, actually. I, at least I think they use the same logo. So if they're not, they can get in a lot of legal hot water. So I think they are. And they're not that expensive. Per song, uh, if you go through TuneCore, TuneCore is uh, like CD Baby. TuneCore is a way you can get your music distributed uh, throughout the world. It, it can appear on iTunes and stuff. And TuneCore also has a number of products. And one of the services they provide is Universal Mastering. Now, before TuneCore had it, I had discovered Universal Mastering. And the guy that mastered my last record, The Start of a New Life, actually won a Grammy. I can't remember his name. It's listed on the CD. But he actually won a Grammy for something Latin. So it's kind of cool. You can use professional masters who uh, even are a Grammy award winning to work on your silly little independent project. And Universal did just a bunch of really good professionals who can sweeten the sound and lower it at certain points, I guess. I'm not sure. It, they do depend a lot on the mix. I'm not a master mixer. I'm certainly hoping that I'm going to get this right in some ways. Um, but anyway, I think I've given you the, the primer on mastering. And Universal is a great way to go, and that's who I'm going to use. So this is the main vocal, the background vocals. I think I did sweeten that. So let's see. One of the things you can, maybe we could hear the artifacts if I'm giving you a sample. There's one viewer, so hi, I'm glad you're here. I can solo out the vocals so that you're not hearing any music. And you know, maybe you can see what I mean. Set me free from the snares that lay before me. All right. So you can hear it like at the beginning, there's this, this weird, it sounds awkward, not so bad with the mix. I could probably fix that a little bit. Set me the, the breath becomes really fast. A lot of folks will remove breaths out entirely, which I think is a little bit robotic. I didn't really notice that in the main mix. So let's see if, if you can hear some crackle and pops in between the, the lyric lines. For me, so I may walk in the light of life. See, that, that's, it's tough to listen to your vocal by itself. Uh, I don't know if, if you have familiarity with um, Paul McCartney and Wings and Linda McCartney, Paul McCartney's wife. Man, she, she was best. So it's hard. You can hear a crackle in here. On the main vocal, I'm just gonna solo, solo out. There's a little crack I didn't notice before. I can't really do much to fix that. What when we play it in context of everything? 
thing, you won't really notice it. Yeah, you couldn't hear it at all. So the beauty of having a bunch of sound conflicting with, with your vocal. I couldn't hear it at all. Now you'll hear it right here. Not even. So that'll stay. I'll, I'm gonna, oh, uh, that already is faded. I'm gonna fade in here. This you see is a little bit merged and, and the O oh, is a little bit awkward. Um, I'm gonna, so rather than re-record the vocal, I'm gonna leave it, I think, as just a. Uh, oh so there it looks like is a little bit of an artifact. As I see a little bump here, you'll probably hear it. I'm just gonna put Please. there it is. That's a lip smack. That guy who was helping me produce the last one used to make fun of my lip smacks because I would lip smack relatively often. So if you you'll see, let me see if I can like right in here, there's a little bump. Like obviously this is all the sound effect. And then you can see that. Now I'm gonna take that out so we don't get the lip smack. So it's a clean vocal, but let's listen to it again. And that, that breath is kind of weird. So let's see what we can do about that. So we take the razor, close up the phrase right there, and we'll fade that. Then we'll move this in. And I, I think I'm going to take that breath out. It sounded kind of weird. So we'll get real close to the next word, fade it up, and let's see how that sounds. Happens. Hey, you that was nice. So you see that now, now that artifact, the lip smack is out. Uh, the breath isn't so crazy breathy. Happens. Hey, you Lord, your word happens. Not bad. Okay. So we'll do that. I see a little bit of artifact in the in these two. So let's see how. Is you there was a little bump there. If you can hear it, I think I hit something. Boom. Boom. I don't know what that is. So you take out the little artifact. This is stuff that if I didn't take time to clean it up, it would still be there. I'm just gonna do it here without listening to it because I'm sure. And maybe when it gets mastered, you know, and they really finagle the frequencies and stuff, it might come out. I'm gonna move this a little closer to the end of the word. And you might notice it. And so obviously that's no good. So we make sure the little artifacts are out. Close that in on the background vocal. So now we'll listen to the vocal. You could tell like, the vote, some of the vocals came in a little bit too early. I could shift them. I'm just going to leave them. You don't really notice in the whole context of the song. So let's try that. That works. So let's close up here. I don't really see any artifacts, but why leave gaps of sound? It's unnecessary. Okay, once again, just folding it. Now, you may be wondering what software that I'm using, I suppose, if you've never seen this before. I'm using Reason, and this is Reason 7. Reason 8 actually comes out uh in a few days could even be today uh i don't need it for this project i don't think i mean it certainly be nice they always have new stuff but um yeah i mean reason seven is fantastic and it's i think you can get a guitar center there are a number of places it's probably around 300 maybe under that now and for what this does i mean it's it's insane so you get the the mixer up here this is a standard mixer you can see the the green 
things here are automation. It means that somehow I've controlled the volume on these levels. So you can set it so the computer will automatically move and fade these and change sounds and stuff in the mix when it's needed. I don't remember in this particular song when I did it, it could very well just be at the end. Um, anyway, let's just keep moving down the line here. Let's see, I hope this is instructive and interesting. The Reason is a, a software that's been around for, for quite some time in various incarnations. And then really through, as soon as Reason 5 came out, that was when uh, the guys that I was starting to work with when I decided to make get into professional, more professional recording, rather than just you know using my Mac and GarageBand, they were using Reason, and Reason Five had just come out, and it was just draw jaw dropping, like wow, you know, because it's got so much built in. I think I'll show you in a sec, because I imagine this this little process is getting a little boring. So occasionally I'll I'll change it up. If you wanted to add a new instrument, for instance, at the top here, create, um, create an instrument track. Let me make sure my MIDI controller keyboard is, oh, these are effect patches. So you get, you could add just a variety of different things. If I wanted to add a static pad. Just all these really, really cool sounds. That's obviously so. If you wanted to see something more interesting, like a acoustic piano, real uh, realistic sounds. Oop, I didn't want that to happen, so I'll undo it. But there's just the sky's the limit for your creativity with this kind of stuff. So it's it's. Uh, All right, I've done these. I close them off. Let's, there's a little artifact there. I think that's a breath. So we'll take that out. See how that sounds. Not afraid. What can man do? Well, that that's a weird transition there. What is that? And you tonight, oh my God, tonight. I I we obviously want to be. Well, I'm glad that I got into this because I I did add just so I could use the same O from here. I, oh. And then I repeat, I cut and paste it. Now there's a little artifact there of a little bit of a bump. I'm gonna leave it as is. It doesn't really show in the mix. And I, I'm not gonna re record this whole thing. And also, that um, I'm not a big fan of that lyric, of that, that uh, out of tune background. What can man do to me? Doesn't sound bad in the full context of the song, though. So I was, it's it's a Linda McCartney. Oh, what can man do to me? Oh my God! Everything about has this. I don't know why. I didn't even notice that before. All right. It didn't even finish the phrase. There we go. Oh, what can man do to me? Little artifacts in there I can already see. Little bumps, let's get rid of that. In you, Lord, your word I praise. Mm -hmm -hmm. You've probably gotten the idea already if you're watching this live and you're just seeing me in the list of um, hangouts that are going out live that I'm a Christian artist. In you, God, your word I praise. In you, Lord, your word I praise. In you, God, I trust, I'm not afraid. What can man do to me? 
great lines. Good vocal. That's uh, most of the stuff I'll get on, on songs that are based. This is based on Psalm 55 and 56, this particular song. Um, I'll, I'll take words out verbatim. <laughs> Artifacts, let's get rid of them. In you, God, I trust, I'm not afraid. Close this up, take a little breath out. That was an awkward background too, a little bit out of tune, but in the context, I think it worked. I pray, and you got, I trust, I'm not afraid. It adds a, a little bit of realism there. I mean, look, that's me in all my glory and imperfection. Any good or anything that resembles perfection in me is the Christ in me. Uh, okay. Da, 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 da. Let's close this. The one that you'll see I'm not touching on the top here, that was a, a, a vocal that, a different track, I guess. I'm kind of sentimental. I guess you could call me like a sound hoarder. It's always fun. And, and a lot of, when you go and listen to, you know, the Beatles put out something um, where they put down old tracks or, um, I can't remember what, was, what that was called, but it was their, their whole collection, and they had these uh, never-before-heard tracks or little snippets in between of mess-ups and stuff. I really, when I work with other people, I get goofy when I work with myself, and this one I really was just recording myself. Uh, I'm not going to get goofy with myself um, <laughs> and talking or joking around. So there's nothing fun in the bad takes here other than they're just bad takes, and if I didn't use them, it's because... They just didn't sound good. I mean, let's see what's here. Actually, it's muted at the top. I'm gonna leave it muted. Sorry. That's not bad. What can man? Now, if you don't, I mean, you have to razor these little small parts in order to get the end piece there, because otherwise it's on, that should be pretty self-explanatory. Uh, I've been told I was patronizing before and instructing people in the obvious, so forgive me. Uh, if there's any questions that you have about this process, about the software and stuff, by all means, put something in the comments down. I don't know how long I'm going to go here. I just figured I'd do something kind of fun. I don't have an appointment at work until 1. So being as it's Rosh Hashanah, I can do some of my uh, God work today as opposed to my ridiculous work at as a lawyer. That works. So we close that off. Let's see the stuff up here. Let's I'm gonna solo it out because I bet there's just a lot of I should have. But what can men do to me? That was clean. But let's Oh, that's closed off. Let's bring this in, take out the breath a little bit. 
For what can man do to me? I like the natural breath in that, oh, in that gap right there. I will close this off a little earlier, though. Let's see how that goes. But what can man do to me? Oh, I could take out a, that quick breath there. Oh, um, I'm gonna leave it. You'll see in the context of everything, it's not really noticeable. Let me make sure I close this off. Yeah. I I like um I'm not sure what you'd call it. It's kind of like Enya. If you're familiar with Enya, it's sort of an Enya um harmony there. Uh and it, but it sounds a little hot in the mix. I'll show you how we can bring that down, test it. That uh this one right here. What can we do to me? So it's not bad, but I'll, let's see if we can lower it in the mix a little bit just by bringing that down. Bring that down a little bit. Now, I can hear, I just heard something. And the thing is, it, it could be in my acoustic. There's not a lot I can do there. I have acoustic. One of the techniques that, that uh, sound recorder or mixers will use is to double up the sound. That's why the acoustic sounds really kind of bold. But I think I hit the, the acoustic guitar. I recorded this one with a mic. And when you do that, man, you, you add in a ton of variables because it'll pick up the foot tap. <laughs> You hear that little tap there. I gotta leave it. It's just gonna be an artifact that hopefully won't be noticed that much. I have to leave it because this ring out is important because the, the whole song stops and this is the last sound that's still there. So that, that little tap is, I'm stuck with it. Uh, I could re record it. I like the track, so I'm not going to. So let's listen to it in context. You'll hear the, the little bump. This one is uh, a little too far away for comfort, so we'll bring it a little bit closer. There's probably a breath up, so I'll... Oh my God, please keep my feet from stumbling. Count my tears, then look all out of stumbling. Count my... Yeah, that actually sounded better. I don't know if you noticed the uh, the breath that was in between these. Keep my feet from stumbling. Count my tears. I just like it a lot cleaner without that breath in such an obvious spot. It makes it appear a little bit robotic, but I don't know. This is just to taste, and there's no right answer here. That's a lot of space right there. So there's more chances, there's little bumps and I'll clean it up in that background vocal. Oh, 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 I forgot about the other harmony. 
can't remember if this is a harmony or double dot. Keep me from stumbling, Lord. Yeah, I, that's uh, the very same, not a harmony at all. All right, I see some artifacts there. Big breath there. Mm -hmm. Close that off. Set me free from the snares that lay before me. That seems that there's like a really big thing there, spike, and I, I don't know if there's anything I can do about that. Send me. Oh, it's like a grinding little voice. Um. One of the things I can try and do, I'll see if, if it'll work, is I'm just going to razor clip between the little phrase and then take the volume of this and see if I can bring it down just a little bit. Let's see. Set me free. That sort of helped. I think the spike wasn't as obvious. Let's see. Set me free from can't tell. That's a tough one. So I'm going to increase the sound just a little bit. Oh, I think I'd rather, like, I wonder if I have, so what I can look for now, see if I have the word set. I know I do. Oh my God, now I could go, and actually, in the vocal above, I used the word set. It spiked again. You can see, so I, I think I'm just going to have to make a judgment call and say, you know, in the context of everything, it ain't so bad. You can tell that, that, you know, if you're a perfectionist, man, this is the worst thing for you. Fortunately, I'm really not. So, you know, that, but, but the people that are, and when they, when they do, recordings you know professionally you get professional mixers and producers i mean the guys that i work with they they are professional musicians for my last album they were meticulous i mean it took us forever we recorded that album in august of 2011 i think it was and it wasn't done we we pretty much got all the tracks down uh, at least the basic tracks i didn't have it in my hands for mastering until a year later a little over actually and so they they were a little bit of what i'm talking about which is just a little over the top but if you listen to the uh, this is the start of the new life that album and a lot of the songs are available in my rob reed uh channel here uh you can listen i mean it it it, it paid off which is great but there's certain you, know, you have to measure the economy of it all of, of how much greater did the songs get from you know spending eight more months on it than what i'm doing here i don't know time will tell we'll see but i, I think these are, are at least for my purposes for for corporate church worship and for my own church this, this, this particular song i know i've done in church not every one of those songs in your face for instance is one that uh is on this album that uh is also on my soundcloud that there's no way that uh, I would play that in church because it's it's a uh, a statement on evangel aggressive evangelism and that really doesn't uh, assist in corporate worship. I don't think unless it was it was a uh, an issue that the pastor was talking about in a particular week. But so I guess it'd be reserved for that. But I haven't had an opportunity for that. So let's continue.
I don't think I'm gonna mess with anything there. Although I, there's no reason that there's that much space there. So the only thing that can happen there is like a little click or something that I can't hear with my my bad hearing. So I take the chance, fade it out earlier. And this one too. I did like that fade though, but I, I don't think. And that one's the one. Let's let's see how that it is with just solos. My Linda McCartney, here it comes. In the light, light. Well, I think that's why I change it because let's see how it works in context. This life is way too long. In the light, uh, it works in context with everything. So I say life in the main vocal a little bit longer. These the background cuts out. Now I'll give you an idea of the automation. I think that's pretty good. Uh, This, you'll see the green surrounding the, this is the master volume of the entire song. And you'll see how I, there's an automation that's set up at the top here. This is the master section. And this is the level where I slowly faded it, not so perfectly, but I guess not, not that concerned about the end there. It's really kind of staggered, um, but watch how it goes. And you'll keep, pay attention to this, that I manually did that. You can actually set reason so it will allow you to on the fly do stuff there goes. so i think we've pretty much gotten light of life finished. uh let's see yeah it's it's cleaned up so i'm going to save it we'll export it as an audio file And now it's going through the whole thing. I mean, I'm not moving that on its own. It starts at the uh, beginning and it goes all the way to the end. It doesn't take very long, but it exports every single bar, uh, puts it on the hard drive. The final wave of something like this would probably be a, uh, pretty close to half a gig, I guess. So it's really, everything's in there. And to give you perspective, once this thing's converted to an MP3, that's why I love you know, actual CDs or albums because you get the, the everything, every single nuance. And MP3 takes, you know, a wave file that's um, 300 to 400 megs and brings it all down and condenses it to about four to six, maybe four to eight megs. I mean, that's a lot of stuff that gets lost in the whole thing. So... That's that one. Maybe we'll uh, throw in one more. I'm trying to think of um, uh, did I say this? Yeah. Um, this next one's He's My Son. Actually, it's still stuck on that screen. So I'll go to the share. See if I can go to He's My Son. He's My Son. There it is. So now we're in a different one. I'm going to get out of Light of Life. This one, I, I wasn't sure if I was going to add because this one was really a demo. Um, I think I dig it. Let's start it. But as a demo, you can really hear the, like, right at the beginning, there were some artifacts there. It's like clicks and stuff. The 
the blue, the light blue here is the acoustic. The room is still and I'm strumming on this busted old guitar. I've already cleaned this up. My eyes set on something in the corner, not that far. It's a boy who shines with beauty, even though the room is dark. And this boy, although he's sleeping, has a way to warm my heart. He's my son. Yeah, I think this one's okay. Anyway, that's this is probably long enough for this. I, I suppose I have to get ready for the real world. Uh, now it's 919. We got a, another song, I think, in the can ready for mastering, or almost there. This one appears to be in the can ready for mastering. Right here is just a muted clip. I, again, I think I, I'm, I'm like a, a sound hoarder. I want to come back later and listen to it uh, just for... Uh, for fun, I guess, in the end, if I revisit the song and how it was recorded and see, there's the only reason that something like this would be here was that it just it wasn't good enough or there's something really bad there. Uh, it didn't sound audibly good. So um, that's it. So I hope this was somewhat educational for you. Again, this is Reason, the, the sound, the DAWs it's called, which is, it stands for Digital Audio Workshop. This is the one that I use. Absolutely amazing. Um, I use an M Audio Mobile Pre to connect to the computer where I plug in the instruments. And you'll see, and I don't play drums, so I have to use a lot of Octorex as a, as a drum sampler. And it's not bad. I mean, it sounds pretty realistic. Uh, ways you can make it more realistic, and this is what I'll say before. I did this yesterday. Uh, I'm double clicking the actual drum. And if you look right down here, I am the velocity is really the volume level. So to give you perspective, I'm just going to solo the, this drum part when the drums come in. One way to make it realistic is to lower the velocity as it climbs. So listen to this the, or the volume, if you will. So you, you hear it slowly build up and then that gives it, it gives a, these are all uh, loops based on, they are real drums played, but obviously it can be very mechanical because each one of these becomes a note that you can actually shift. And I can take a note here. This is just a symbol um, and make it a little awkward by just throwing it over here. Blank. And that random little thing there I'm gonna undo so it, it converts a, a sample into a mechanized loop where you can just change stuff it's great though because you can even write notes in each one of these notes is is a particular sound and that's it so thank you for watching and I hope this was helpful any questions you have about sound recording uh, music recording leave it down in the comments below and look out for uh, this album tentatively titled uh, Dreams I Didn't Even Know I Had, um, which hopefully will be released on November 15th. I'm going to try and get this thing out for mastering by tomorrow, really. So I think I'm pretty close. It's kind of exciting. Uh, my third worship CD project. God bless. Talk to you later.